So you got your life values, your work values, your life goals, your work goals. What about your eulogy values? What about your eulogy goals? Like for when you die. Friends, I'm Joel Kurlowski, the super brave teacher who is already starting to look at his eulogy values, his eulogy goals, because you know what? We're all gonna die. I'm gonna die. I actually think about it more than you can imagine, but we're getting there. Before that, like this video, share this video, do what you do, get the word out that every time you share, like, and get out the message about the super brave teacher, you are tipping Google and YouTube in a radically positive and accepting way for all LGBTQ plus teachers and students like this guy. So thank you, thank you, Death. I hate talking about death, I hate death. In fact, every night before I go to bed, guess what I tell my husband? Not I love you, yes, I tell him that. Not, you're amazing, yes, I tell him that. I also, the last thing I almost always say is, don't die, <laughs> please don't die. Yes, friends, I've had a lot of death in my family. My youngest brother, Aaron, died, and my grandparents died, my aunt died, and it's something that, especially since the trauma of my brother dying, it's something that's always in my head, and it's something I'm always thinking about. So, I thought it'd be appropriate to share my seven eulogy values. Yep. When I die, what are people going to say about me? What are seven things I want people to say about me? So here it goes. Side note, to give credit where credit is due, I got a lot of this inspiration from becomingminimalist.com. So if you want to see their ideas, go to becomingminimalist.com. Not stealing their ideas. I'm taking them and making them my own. That's what teachers do. I'm a super teacher. That's what teachers do. We take ideas and make them better. Seven things I hope will be said at my eulogy. Seven. When I think of Joel, he was so intentional. He did everything with such intention and he really started becoming more mindful. Did you notice he was like mindful? Yeah, every year of his life he got a little bit more mindful. I never thought he'd get there, but he got there. The way Joel loved people, it was so full. It was so unconditional. It was just intense love for people and for God and for others. And it was so evident that he just loved profoundly. He was such a giver. Joel just had this big open heart. He gave without hesitation. He just gave and he gave and he gave. What a beautiful person, just giving. That's what he did. He just gave because he loved to. Joel learned to rest. He finally learned to have some downtime. Like, at first I thought he was like gonna work himself to death, but he finally learned to rest. And how beautiful that he got to not only work hard, but he got to play hard and also rest even harder. He took care of himself. I didn't think it happened, but he did. That Joel was so optimistic and hopeful. I could be like, um, the glass is half full and he'd be like, um, that glass is full. You just need a different glass. That glass is full. You got plenty of water. That Joel was so hopeful. He was so hopeful. Joel loved making memories and having traditions and experiences with others. He could take the simplest thing and turn it into like a magical thing. It could be just throwing a blanket on the floor and having a picnic. That's what Joel did. He didn't need much. He took whatever he had and he made it special. And finally, I think Joel came out of the womb dancing to the beat of his own drum. He was always dancing. He was always, his life was a musical, felt like. And when he didn't have a drum, he made a drum and he just figured out a way to always be dancing and doing things to his own rhythm. So he didn't do it the best. He wasn't the most important person in the world, but what he did had the Joel stamp on it and you knew that it was Joel. So there you have it, super brave friends. That is what I want my eulogy to be. That's what I want said in my eulogy someday. I aspire to those things and everything I do, I'm thinking about that daily because you know what? If this YouTube channel doesn't get a million views, it's okay. I'm having a blast. I'm doing me. And if I'm not the best teacher in the world, guess what? I'm having a blast. I'm doing me. I'm loving kids. It is super fun. And that's what I want to be said in my eulogy someday, that Joel wasn't the best, wasn't anything, whatever, but he sure was himself. And especially 
towards the end of his life, he really came into his own and he just was accepting himself so much that it just radiated bravery for others and sparked bravery for others. So thank you so much for watching this video. I encourage you, what would you like your eulogy values to say? Leave a comment below. I would love to see what you would add on to this. What am I not thinking about? Let me know. It means so much to me that we are having deep conversations about real things that's not just like, how to do your hair, but what type of life are you living? What type of legacy do you want to leave? What do you want your eulogy to be said? To be said at your eulogy? All those things are important to me. Speaking of what's important to me, you are important. You are brave. You are enough. Thanks for being you. Thanks for watching this video. Thanks for liking this video. And I will say to myself, Joel, don't die. <laughs> because you are brave, awesome, beautiful, and even if you do, you'll be remembered for being brave, awesome, loved, and